Okay, so today I have a pleasure to introduce Oleksandr Gamayun from uh, Ukraine, from Kiev originally, because he finished his PhD in 2012 uh, at Bogolyubov Institute of Theoretical Physics. Then he moved to uh, Great Britain, north of Manchester, to Leicester, Lancaster. Uh, then he spent some time still as a postdoc in Netherlands and just well, directly from the Netherlands, Alexander moved to Poland. And now he's staying at Warsaw University thanks to a NAVA fellowship, so-called ULAM program. And today we have a pleasure to listen uh, to his talk, to his results, which will be about, I guess, uh, 1D systems and uh, interacting atoms probably. But we'll learn soon. So, Alexander, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, good afternoon. Uh, indeed, today I will talk about um, a mobile impurity propagating in uh, one dimensional uh, media. And this is uh, talk is based uh, on a series of work which I did with uh, different people over some span of years. And uh, to start, uh, let me immediately say what I mean by mobile impurity. And schematically, it's shown here. So basically, we have a media composed uh, of uh, uh, red particles, and we have some particle with some distinct properties, which I here mark as blue one. And basically, the question is, uh, what can we say about uh, properties of, of this particle? And uh, I will try to use the, the most uh, simple uh, model to get, uh, to get some analytic answers. And at the same time, to account for, uh, for some phenomena non, non perturbatively. So that will be my goal. And uh, in fact, I would like to know uh, what interactions bring my uh, one impurity into my system. So as a model, I'll choose what is called Maguire model, which is basically gas of uh, uh, one dimensional uh, free fermions, non relativistic. Shown, shown here, and uh, impurity, and uh, impurity interacts with uh, my fermions uh, through contact interaction with uh, coupling constant uh, G. And uh, so the red particles do not interact. Uh, a, a part of Pauli principles, they do not interact. Mm -hmm. so they, yeah, so. Yeah, because they are identical. Exa exactly, exactly. So what's important is they are identical. Al alternatively, you can uh, think of them as Tom Gerardo gas of bosons at infinite coupling. So, uh, alternative point of view is that they interact too much if they're bosons. Right, it's, it's, uh, it's also important. And uh, essentially, I will uh, try to solve this model uh, and uh, get some uh, answers in the thermodynamic limit, where the number of host particles in the system size goes to infinity, such that uh, the density is uh, a constant. And uh, uh, basically, uh, along with uh, coupling constant G, I will use also <laughs> a dimensionless coupling constant gamma or inverse cou coupling constant gamma. So this is my main notation. And uh, my plan today to be as pedagogical as possible, so I will explain in details how to, to, to solve these models. But before doing this, uh, let me give some motivation. I think I don't like this yet. Yeah, please. I mean, I mean, it's not Maybe it's let's use yes. I mean, I, I, how, how come? that the par blue particle can interact with the red particle at the very end, mm -hmm. say, right end of that line. Right. So I mean, I, with, with, with that kind of interaction you had written. Yes. I mean, so it has to overcome yes. the, all the other, how, how the blue particle can overcome the red particles in order to touch the particle at the very end of the right or left. Right. So uh, there is no place in the one dimension to overcome. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, in principle, uh, this is uh, very schematic that particles are, are localized because uh, mostly uh, the wave function of a particle uh, on a ring is uh, basically but that a, a plane wave. Can be also the classic. Right. Yeah, but then uh, classically it's not really interesting because indeed uh, uh, the blue particles is uh, locked between two red. Yeah. However, we are in quantum mechanics and what can happen, you can tunnel. Part of wave function uh, of blue particles can tunnel and can be very trivially distributed over all systems, as we will see. So it's not no problem to tunnel through, through, through delta function barrier. 
there are some probabilities, of course. I, I will solve this uh, uh, problem exactly. So there will be no kinetic equation, even, even though we can write it, no nonsense. So that will be, uh, yeah, that will be goal for today. Right, uh, and uh, let me tell you maybe uh, first about possible experimental realization of such systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, uh, uh, this uh, realization goes to uh, experiments with ultra-cold atoms in uh, optical traps. So what is schematically shown here is a cube of atoms placed in the uh, minimum or maximum, I don't remember, of interference uh, pattern created by, by four lasers. And the gradient of uh, magnetic field is such that all these atoms, they just levitate. So, 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 so we have uh, effectively one dimensional systems uh, yeah, just, just created in, in, in this uh, form. Uh, and uh, for them to levitate, they have to be in very specific uh, hyperfine state. So for, for CZ atoms, it's 3-3. Three, three. Doesn't know much. Uh, then how uh, physically uh, the impurity is created? Uh, impurity is created by, uh, by experimentalists by sending a very short RF pulse such that some of the atoms, so somewhere in the middle of, of all these tubes, they change the hyperfine state from 3-3 to 3-2 and they are no longer held by the optical trap. So they start to feel gravity and they just uh, start to fall down. So basically after that uh, experimentalists can do imaging and the resolve um, uh, basically, a momentum distribution of the particle. And uh, this was done in, in 2017. And uh, what they observe is that uh, contrary to uh, normal free fall, that we would expect for small couplings, the, there are some kind of block oscillation. So uh, particle accelerates to more or less to the speed of sound or to the, to, to the Fermi momentum, and then somehow it reflects. So, so, so this is ideal picture. Um, and that's what they observe in experiment. So there is some kind of reflections and they call it block oscillation with, uh, uh, without lattice. Okay, so I'm not gonna exactly describe uh, this experiment because I will not have force, but this uh, is kind of, if you wish, experimental motivation for, for, for my work. And uh, another motivation comes from theoretical physics and uh, it, uh, uh, in concerns with universal description of the correlation functions in one-dimensional quantum systems. Uh, now it's, uh, it's quite generic, so let, uh, let's suppose we would like to, to know two-point function of uh, some operators in uh, quantum system, which can be presented as sum of form factors or matrix elements, so, so sum over F. And uh, to get universal properties of, of uh, uh, this function, uh, it's reasonable to take into account only uh, the most relevant terms, which uh, ha have a name of, of the so-called uh, soft excitations shown here. So, so, so basically the ground state of the system kind of resembles in for, for, for acting one the, uh, the Fermi C, and then soft uh, uh, particle hole excitations here, uh, they, they, they contribute the most. And uh, to, uh, to, to account for infinite number, essentially, of, of such excitations, uh, uh, this program goes by the name of bosonization, which means that basically, uh, you, uh, to describe these excitations, you replace uh, your original systems with uh, uh, essentially free bosons. Then uh, the operators that you would, would, would like to know, that it will be some, um, functional of this ribosonic field and then this uh, correlation function is very easy to compute yeah because this is essentially free theory and this uh, gives uh, this famous power law and uh, and, and all the stuff but from, from the physical point of view it accounts only for low energy excitations and sometimes uh, we might interested in some high energy excitations and uh, then it's not enough to, to, to consider only soft excitations and, 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 and linearize the spectrum. Also, we have to consider at least one high energy excitations and uh, where uh, the curvature of the spectrum is important. And then uh, this type of excitations is naturally described by mobile impurity in this bus. So this kind of second uh, 
motivation why uh, these mobile impurities are uh, important, uh, so, so, so solution reiterate, because they are responsible for the universal description of the high energy uh, processes, and all this program uh, goes by name of nonlinear Latinger liquid developed in, in this works. All right, but now let's come back to our original uh, problem. Uh, how to solve this uh, Hamiltonian? Uh, first, we notice that, uh, right. There is problem in stating the first equation, the mass of the impurity is not equal to the mass of the particle. Right, this is our choice. We can consider different models. And how, how it differs from this model? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and this impurity is just the same particle as others, but in different internal state. Exactly, so they, exactly. they have the same mass. Yes. Exactly, so from experimental point of view, in, in this, uh, particular setup, their masses are exactly equal because uh, the red and blue particles, they're different by just a uh, uh, hyperfine high, high, high state. By, by a uh, hyperfine state. Hyperfine state, thank no, you. Uh, yes, no longer, no longer. There, there is absolutely no difference between the first term and the second term. Right, right. So, uh, uh, so the why, difference, why, why the, uh, the, the, uh, very good question. The difference is in statistics. So when I exchange this uh, two uh, particles, I get uh, uh, sine minus, while I, I exchange this and this, basically nothing happens, it's a new state. So this is, yeah, statistic uh, has to be additionally set to the Hamiltonian. So this is not the Hamiltonian for this. This is Hamiltonian for the system. Then it's, there is no difference between the first term and the second term. Uh, consider, consider this as, as particles of spin up and this spin down. Just written in the first quantized form. The P is a momentum. P is a momentum, right. So. No, I think everything yeah, is, is fine. It's just a matter, maybe, semantic. It's matter of writing. <laughs> Yes. 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 But you. Uh, but the derivative. But, but the derivative of what? He, okay. Uh, so 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 this is uh, is uh, d over dx spin up and this d over dx spin down. If you prefer, I can write in the second quantized form. Maybe. The, I, I mean, I, I understand the equation, but there is no difference between the. If the particle has the same as. Yes. Statistics. Statistics no, is different. St like statistics. Statistics. The states are different. The states if do not, yeah, the states do not um, assume any uh. symmetry when we exchange the impurity with one of the fermions. Why, if we exchange the fermions, then there must be minus. So these uh, particles the with. Um, completely symmetric. Of course. The states are different. Sure. Yes. We are simply looking for solutions of a given symmetry. Of course. Yeah, but that's, uh, that, that should be. Yeah, so, 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 so essentially, the, uh, in the second quantized form, uh, the, 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 Hamiltonian, uh, the Hamiltonian looks like this. Plus. Uh, uh, And uh, we just solve uh, in, in, in a sector where uh, this operator is uh, a one. All right? Good. Yeah, it's clear, I think. Okay, it's, thanks. I, I mean. Right. Uh, but, um, but, but you're right that in principle, this is parameter of our system. In principle, we, uh, you, I, I can put any number here and ask what are the uh, wave functions, what are the solutions? As it uh, turns out, then uh, in this case, I, I will not be able to solve this model. That's why it's, it's, it's paramount for me to have masses equal. OK, uh -huh. hope it's clear. Uh, so the, so the, you use Godin solution, yes? Uh, yes, but in this time, uh, yes. Uh, but I, I will not have to go into all this uh, sophisticated uh, uh, Godin solution. And it turns out that uh, for this specific sector, so, so solution is super elementary, and I would like okay. to. To present, but in principle, yes, you write this. You assume periodic boundary yes, condition. I assume periodic boundary condition, but later I will send L to to, to infinity. Sure, but, 
yes. Uh, right. Uh, so basically, so the first observation is that we have obvious uh, integral of motion, which is total momentum. So let's uh, uh, find the eigenfunction of this Hamiltonian with a fixed uh, uh, momentum. So we, let's say, fixed uh, position of uh, our impurity, and then we, uh, we have to de diagonalize this Hamiltonian already only for our fermions. Uh, which means that we have to find an eigenfunction that is uh, anti-symmetric, that is con uh, uh, continuous uh, when we go around the system, and uh, b because of this delta function, the uh, derivative, uh, the first derivative of a function is not continuous, but has uh, this jump, as, as expected. So, so now the task is to find this psi. Good. And uh, here is an ansatz. So this is almost a slatter determinant. Uh, constructed from, from plane waves, but it has one extra line. Uh, yeah, so basically with some un, uh, yet unknown coefficients and, and yet unknown momentum. But uh, we, we already see that this wave function is anti-symmetric and the energy and, and momentum, they are given by these uh, formulas. Right, uh, then let's see how the, uh, the rest of conditions can be satisfied. Uh, then uh, just uh, demanding this condition, so, 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 so for instance, in, in, key, in, in the first uh, uh, row, uh, we uh, were able to determine the uh, coefficients ij, because this two uh, rows should be proportional, so this determines ij, and uh, uh, this condition basically will give us uh, uh, the condition on on uh, momenta. So, so 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 how does it work? So here we just uh, substitute this condition again in, in the first row, and then uh, since we have to uh, um, demand vanishing of the whole determinant, we have to. Uh, the only way to do this is, the, is that this line is proportional to the last one, and we call the uh, coefficient of proportionality lambda. So. Here we have this lambda, and then uh, it, this is basically condition for uh, for 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 quasi momenta. So we have to solve this in principle transcendental equations. All solutions should be different, otherwise, if they coincide, the uh, uh, the whole wave function just uh, uh, just zero. But if we do this, we we solve our problem. Okay. So here is a, again the summary of, of of what I just said. So, so, so the, the eigenstate with a fixed momentum Q is uh, uh, given by n plus one uh, numbers that are solutions of this equation. And uh, essentially uh, energy and, and the momentum, they just, these linear combinations. Now, if we look carefully for, 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 for this equation, in fact, it's almost three uh, electrons with some phase shift. So this phase shift in, in a large system size, in, in principle, instead of uh, solving this equation, we can replace with uh, uh, yeah, just this uh, elementary function, so pi over 2 minus r tangent lambda. And then uh, the only question is, so what about this lambda? So, so far it was just an artifact of our solution, just some coefficient of proportionality that we introduced. However, let us uh, remind ourselves that we're working in a sector with fixed momentum. So to compute momentum, we uh, of course, have to sum uh, all these uh, kJs, which uh, will have some discrete part and part that depends on, on, on lambda. So basically, lambda is more or less is the same as the total momentum. So once we fix n, then we have to find lambda, and we can and we will use uh, this uh, interchangeably. But yes. Right, but uh, uh, we work in. Yes, yes, yes. So, so Q is operator. However, it computes with Hamiltonian. Therefore, we diagonalize our system where Q has fixed value. But this is the eigenvalue of this operator. Right, right. So we simultaneously diagonalize both H and Q. Right. Uh, so total momentum is an integral of motion as the same, well, as the same energy. So, and uh, right. So then. That's how we, 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 we parameterize the state. And then we can uh, sp speak about uh, the uh, vacuum. And the vacuum uh, ha has very uh, peculiar structure. Uh, so uh, it's shown here. And it uh, amounts for choosing consecutive uh, integers from minus n over 2 to n over 2. 
And then uh, when the total momentum changes from zero to uh, 2kf, uh, this parameter but lambda. What you mean by vacuum? Is it the ground state? Ground state, ground state. The state with the lowest energy. Yes. Yeah, ground, state. ground state, ground state. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, minimal energy. Yes, yes. Uh, right. Uh, and, and then um, basically, this is a very pe peculiar and, and universal fe feature for one dimensional system that you have a low, lower bound of. Uh, of excitation spectrum and uh, in the uh, uh, attractive case it's a, it's a smooth curve and when we go from from, from zero to 2kf then uh, lambda goes from uh, minus infinity to plus infinity to cover all this and then uh, on top of this we have all, all these excitations when we have a bound state but so, so, so when our <laughs> coupling is different then we have this cusp and uh, lambda goes uh, yeah. But I will talk mostly about the repulsive case. Then uh, what's interesting is that, uh, uh, and what normally when people talk about impurity immersion in media, they talk about polaron. And, and the, what they're interested in the, in the effective mass of these particles, not the mass that was in the, in the Hamiltonian, but uh, rather the curvature of, of this curve, or, uh, or rather here, uh, around K0. And uh, here I plotted for you this curvature. So now, since, 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 since we have exact solution, we know uh, analytic answer. As this is for, so dashed line is for repulsive case. So this is inverse effective mass and uh, basically just uh, goes to two. So uh, for, so, so, sorry, for attractive case, uh, basically if you crank up uh, uh, Interactions and basically you have just one bound state and, and then basically decoupled from the spectrum while uh, for a passive case uh, basically effective mass goes to infinity if you go to <coughs> infinitely large attractions. But this ground state is highly degenerate because it's translation in Yes, so, 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 so we have this uh, uh, kind of, yeah, so this basically is a picture and it uh, repeats periodically, yes. So you fix the position somehow. Uh, fix the momentum. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. Very good question. So we consider ground state at a fixed total momentum. Of course. Yes, yes. And this is exactly what is plotted. So this is total momentum. And this is uh, how uh, the energy of ground state behaves. It's exactly momentum because you have in coordinate space. Yes. Translation and invariant. Exactly. Not on fluid conserved. Yes. Yes. So you must fix the position of the ground state. On the I mean, no, <coughs> single, I I single so. uh, particle density is uniform, yes, of the system. I, I'll show you single particle density. Okay. It's, it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it is uniform. Yeah, yeah, you have uh, translational invariance, but uh, at the same time, if you shift uh, every, yeah, yeah, probably it's better here. Uh, if you shift every. Uh, but then I would, I would say that there is still only a single ground state, namely the one. With the total momentum equal to zero. Uh, in the finite L, you're absolutely correct. Uh, in the finite L, you're absolutely correct because, uh, in fact, this minimum, they are lifted a little bit one over L. If, 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 if you go around, which, which is seen uh, from here. So if you uh, going from this vacuum to this one, uh, uh, amounts to the what is called umklam process when you take one particle from one side and, and, and brings to the other one. But uh, it's clear to see that it's, uh, yeah, one over L square correction to the energy. So in, 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 uh, in a uh, thermodynamic limit, it's, 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 it's kind of okay. So this is, and uh, moreover, the experiment that I showed you with this block oscillations, roughly speaking, it explained as follows. So if you uh, pull particle very slowly, then it just follows its ground state. And that's why it, 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 it gets this uh, block oscillations. Of course, it's very bad explanation because uh, uh, if one starts compute how slowly you should move, uh, that's, uh, yeah, uh, something does not add up, but um, roughly speaking, that's, that's an explanation. Okay, so this, uh, everything we can tell about the spectrum of, of the, uh, uh, of my impurity. Now let's talk about the, so, so, so some correlation functions. And uh, since uh, we have just one impurity, uh, so the only, uh, for, uh, for form factor we, we should know is that uh, basically form factor be, be between uh, C dagger, so this is dagger, uh, uh, that creates impurity at some uh, momentum P 
uh, just in the gas of free fermions and uh, overlap with some eigenstate. So once we know this, yeah, then basically that's all we need. And uh, because of the very factorized form of the wave function that I presented, it can be easily computed and it also has this very nice form of the squared of almost Cauchy determinant, except for one extra line, which kind of responsible for, 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 for impurity. Okay, so this is exact expression. Yeah, questions? All right, and now what we can uh, compute with this. So, so mostly I will focus on, on, on the momentum distribution of uh, the impurity in, in uh, some eigenstate. Uh, and uh, this amounts to summation of uh, these uh, form factors that uh, I showed you, and it's obtained as follows. So you want to compute this object, and then just inside you introduce uh, just resolution of unity, and then you have this uh, square to this uh, form factors. And the version of this is uh, uh, with, with time dependence is uh, when you insert uh, impurity at zero, zero, and then extract it to T, then it's basically this function. And uh, finally, you can uh, uh, ask yourself what, uh, for instance, what is the average momentum of the impurity which was injected with some momentum P0, and then it evolves uh, with time. So this is given by this sums. and. Uh, for instance, asymptotic momentum is, is, is given by these sums. Uh, and the, in, in this last case, um, uh, basically a, a, a part of uh, uh, form factors of impurity, you, you also need to know the matrix element of the momentum. But believe me, they have like, like similar structure, so even simpler. All right, and now the, the task is can we uh, and, and how we can uh, perform these summations. And uh, Basically, we can do this exactly due to very simple uh, determinantal structure. So basically, we have to sum uh, some uh, squares of determinants, which is uh, basically no wonder that in the end uh, we will result in one big determinant, or rather uh, difference of determinants for the density matrix, which is defined as, uh, well, basically as Fourier transformation of, of our momentum distribution. So, in the end, uh, uh, the answer is uh, it, it can be expressed as as a difference of two determinants of, of some kernel case that depends on solution of these transcendental equations uh, and uh, uh, some, some, some extra kernel W. So right now, uh, the exact f form of this kernels are not important, but it's important that they are smooth functioned and they have two pi over L prefactor in front of them. In what sense well, is it density matrix? It's a number. It's not a matrix. It's, uh, it's not, so, sorry, I said the matrix. No, no. It's, it's, it's one particle distribution function. No, no, but you said the row. Yes. It's a density matrix. Oh. Yeah, yeah, one particle. So, so, so. The density matrix is a matrix. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, uh, so, row of. Uh, I know x x prime, and uh, it's uh, when you take uh, many body wave function of your system x n psi uh, x prime x one ta -ta 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 x n, and then you integrate over all coordinates of your gas particles d x one. Dxn. So this is what is called. Uh, trace, yeah, yeah, it's it, yeah, it's trace. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's why it's called one particle. Uh, trace, uh, trace of yeah, yeah. So you traced out all the uh, gas, and uh, then what what you left is a row of uh, x x prime. But as as you said, because of translational invariance, in fact, it uh, uh, depends only on difference. And that's exactly what I'm computing. But yeah. but. but no, no, n is the Fourier of this. So n of p is when you take this guy. Integral of this. Yes, 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 yes. If, if you do Fourier transformation, then, then you'll get a, a momentum distribution. And that's, but, and, 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 and actually it's much easier to see, uh, wait, sorry, uh, about this like, like, like it's written. 
just to be sure that we are on the same page. So <coughs> you had mathematical method to find ground state, yes. which is actually, well, we have uh, all states. Yeah, for all states, yeah. uh, which can be given analytically, still it's a very complicated object. Yes. Yes. That's why we have to look at some properties like momentum yes. distribution or to learn something about this exactly, ground state. Exactly. So, uh, in the end, I, uh, of course, for finite system, I cannot say much yet, but uh, I'm interested in large system uh, uh, size. So, so, so the first simplification, uh, yeah, I try to explain here, is that instead of solving uh, actually this transcendental equation, we kind of can approx approximate in, in large system size by just uh, say that this is a leading part, and then this delta is just this. So this is uh, assumed to be valid in. Uh, and, 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 and with the help of uh, this approximation, I, I, I get this curvature. Uh, but now we are uh, considering uh, correlation functions. So now we have this. And, and it's very important. So, so now I would like to play the same trick, but for correlation functions. And then it's, it's very crucial for me that my correlation functions are expressed in, in the way that is determined n by n and 1 plus uh, something small, like, like, like 1 over L. And it turns out that in this form, you can send uh, both n and l to infinity. Uh, and uh, what you will have, uh, it will be not just uh, determinant of ordinary uh, matrices, but what is called free globe determinant of some kernels that act on, on functions uh, through the convolution. And it, it turns out that uh, this object, uh, they are just natural generalization of uh, normal Riemann integrals. So if Riemann integral is, can be uh, understood as a limit of uh, just Riemann sum. So you have some quadrature, you have some weights, some, some, some points. Uh, then basically this determinant is, uh, uh, yeah, basically, basically determinant of matrix n by n when n goes to infinity. But what's more important that in this form any quadrature will do. So as uh, uh, with integral, you can put just one over n and if n is large enough, it's, 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 it's good enough. Same here. So you don't have to kind of respect discretization that got from the solution of, the, of, of, of uh, uh, better equations like it was here. Uh, but you can just uh, choose any and then it, it, it will give basically the same answer in, in, in thermodynamic limits. Mm -hmm. That's why we'll have a solution with kernels that just some functionals of uh, just my phase shift. And this is analog of, of how to take uh, thermodynamic limit for correlation functions, the same as we did for spectrum. Uh, so here is just uh, some details. So that's how my, 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 my kernels looks like. So they, they depend just on this phase shift. And uh, yeah, so, mm, so, so y is, is coordinate of my uh, one particle density matrix. And uh, yeah, if not this factor, that would be exactly the same kernel. But, and now let's see, uh, yeah, now this uh, uh, solution in terms of <laughs> determinant, it's as good as solutions in terms of quadratures of, of normal integrals. So we can easily plot them. And that's, uh, uh, it's plotted here for total momentum zero. So these lines are solutions for finite n, where I had to solve all these better equations numerically. And this uh, uh, blue line is just uh, what I get from uh, from the terminal. So it's kind of uh, uh, reflects the uh, ans answer for infinite system. So for Q0, we don't have oscillations, and uh, uh, otherwise we have oscillations exactly with Q in, in real and imaginary part. Right, and uh, so let's uh, maybe look more into this uh, distribution that we just obtained. So we see that for large momenta, so uh, here uh, red and uh, black are just for uh, typical values of complete constant uh, for a repulsive and attractive case, but we can just focus on, on black one. It's, it's, it's for repulsive. So, so for large y, and, uh, we see that uh, uh, basically our uh, rho is uh, just some power law. And in fact, it, it works very well. I, 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 <laughs> Up to now, uh, small values where basically some power law would diverge, and this is uh, uh, rho goes just to one. But at small rho, we have uh, 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 sorry, small y's we have also uh, another expressions which uh, amounts for knowing uh, momentum distribution for large k, which is uh, some constant o o o over k to the four, and that is shown here. So that's we know analytically from the uh, just. Uh, 
expansion of Lagrange, of Lagrange determinants at y, which is uh, analytical, it's much harder to find this asymptotic, this, this solid lines. And that's, uh, I, I would like to explain how with bosonization to find this. F, uh, but first, I, I'll show how non trivial is the answer. So, so basically, this is uh, uh, this power law that I, pl that I plotted to you. And uh, uh, okay, we have some exponents that depends on uh, my, my, my phase shift computed at uh, plus minus kf. But the, what is remarkable is that we managed to find uh, the prefactor, uh, which is, has this horrible form. So, so the C of some double integrals, uh, some Barnes functions, the generalization of, 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 of gamma functions. And uh, yeah, so, 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 so in the next slide, I'll tell you how to get this. Uh, but, uh, and maybe uh, for impenetrable bosons, uh, uh, the same quantity was computed in, uh, in, in late 70s uh, uh, by Gracie Vidya, and uh, they got uh, this answer, which is like, uh, yeah, some, some, some case of, uh, of this answer. All right, so, so how to get this prefactor? And uh, <laughs> this is exactly, uh, can be obtained uh, by taking a, a, into account of these soft modes uh, the, the, that I uh, mentioned uh, in the beginning. And uh, the procedure goes as follows. So, so, so again, you have some, you have to return to the uh, finite system, and then you, have to consider your um, form, form factor series. And uh, then basically you try to identify the most relevant uh, terms here, like the, the biggest. But it turns out that there are no biggest because even I, I, in the best scenario, the, uh, uh, this overlap, it dies with the system size as, as a power law or worse, uh, which means uh, that we have some kind of orthogonality catastrophe. Uh, so to, to fix this uh, decay, we have to take into account infinite number of excitations. Uh, and they are exactly taken uh, care by uh, this uh, uh, particle hole excitations uh, in, in, uh, at, at the edge of, of Fermi C, left and right. But what's nice in uh, analyzing this, we, we have to analyze just one uh, overlap, which uh, as I showed you is, is, is nothing but something like this. So we have to fix ends consecutively, both the same for K and, and for K, and study a large N example. Then we will know this coefficient. And then taking care of uh, the soft modes is, is, is basically nothing just to replace this N with this X, which is done by uh, the means of, uh, uh, yeah, of, uh, of bosonization. Right, and then this is what I call microscopic bosonization because now we also know this prefactor, which is also very nice. Okay, so this is kind of clear. And uh, finally, let me tell you uh, what uh, Fourier transformation of my row of x looks like. It turns out that the shape of, mo of momentum distribution of a particle inside some, uh, some state is, uh, depends heavily on the, on, on the total momentum for, for, for which we uh, do the transformation. And it can change uh, from a bosonic uh, 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 distribution shown here with black for Q0. So this is kind of what we expect for tong gas. To completely fermionic when total momentum is, is Kf and uh, something skewed in between. So, so this kind of uh, remarkable in a sense that or originally uh, we didn't have any statistics between uh, red and blue particles, so we could easily interchange and nothing happened. And now it seems that uh, somehow statistical this effective distribution depends on the total momentum after we integrated out all the gas. And indeed, we can show analytically, at least for infinite coupling constant, that uh, indeed this distribution is distribution of anionic gas, such that uh, uh, when we interchange uh, two, two particles, uh, then we get neither plus one, nor no minus one, but some phase with kappa. And this phase is connected with lambda and with total momentum in, in this simple formula. So this is uh, kind of interesting that we get this effective statistics just uh, looking at the uh, mobile impurity. Yeah, so this is kind of ends uh, this uh, 
moment of dependent statistics part. And uh, then I uh, would love to comment. Uh, uh, so, so far, we uh, considered everything for, for zero temperature. So what we did, we took one of the ground state with fixed momentum and then uh, computed momentum distribution in it. Now the question is, what if uh, 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 we would like to consider uh, system at finite uh, temperature? Then uh, it turns out uh, that ex uh, explicit expression needs to average over all uh, ground states with, with different momenta with, with um, some prefactor, but a part of it we have uh, the same expression and uh, we have to multiply our uh, kernels with with distribution of, of our state well this is the simplest uh, for, for me distribution I, I, I'm, I'm not happy with this because because there are excited states with total momentum zero yeah. which are probably below some of the quickly moving uh, states so in other words you are choosing some subs sub Set no, of, no, no, it's not, it's not like we choose and we uh, uh, literally averaging with e to the minus beta h with all possible uh, momenta. Yeah. So once again, if at p equals zero, at p, at p equals zero, there is a lot of excited yes. states. And we that, take into account all of them. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, so, so this taking into, into account into by introducing the, the Fermi distribution here. So, so, so previously we had uh, just from from minus kf to kf step function. Now we have uh, well, all thermal excitations are taken into account. This, but what I'm saying on top of this, uh, you 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 have to take into account. But as a mathematical uh, physicist, I'm interested in asymptotics of this uh, guy. So how to compute it? Obviously, I cannot now use that marvelous method that I presented uh, you on a previous slide. Why? Because we, we don't even have the age of Fermi excitations. We have, uh, yeah, something all, st all st well, we're somewhere in the middle of the spectrum for typical uh, state of thermal. So we don't have uh, soft excitations, and uh, this is disaster. Uh, however, again, what we can do, we can just notice and, and play some trick. So we see that mostly what, what, what's done on in terms of uh, Fermi determinants is appearance of this distribution of the state. So previously we had this, and now we have this, and now action. And then the idea that we put like recently is that what if we kind of ignore that we at, at uh, finite temperature, but try to compute for some alternative uh, uh, fermions, if you wish, with some effective uh, phase shifts that we don't know yet, but the only thing that we know is that it's kind of zero temperature, then we will get this type of expression again, but from minus infinity to infinity. And then we'll try to identify exact kernels with this one, and that's uh, how we find uh, new of t. And then once we know new of t, we, then we know how to compute correlations for uh, asymptotics for uh, zero temperature, then we basically know everything. So that was uh, our plan. And that is, uh, uh, yeah, roughly how it's Im Im implemented on a little bit simpler kernel. So, so in our system, uh, even the bare uh, phase shift it depends on on momentum, so it's some R tangent lambda minus alpha Q. Now let's, for a moment, uh, uh, consider it to be constant. Then it's called like pure side, side kernel. So without sigma, it's just uh, determining the text from minus Kf to Kf with uh, this new, so this is constant. And then when we introduce uh, some uh, temperature distribution, then, then how to proceed? Well, we can just uh, declare that this is our new, uh, phase shift just by solving this equation. So just we just say what is in front is as if it was at zero temperature. Then we find effective new of t. It's not exactly true. It's, it's true up to some exponentially small terms in X. Uh, but uh, then we can, again, play the, uh, the same game as, as, as before. And then out of all this uh, Barnes functions and all double integrals, what is left is this. Uh, and now observe that um, this effective new, in fact, uh, uh, it, it does not correspond to any uh, fermions at all, in particular because it it's, it's, uh, has complex value. So this phase shift is complex, it depends on the state. But it's exactly correct because now, in, in, instead of uh, uh, oscillations, we will have uh, exponential decay, which we expect for correlation functions at, at finite temperature. All right, so this is what's uh, for this uh, uh, very toy model. For our system, uh, because 
this new depends on momentum and lambda. There are some complications which I don't want to go. But uh, long story short, we will have some uh, elementary expressions or maybe some integrals of, of elementary expressions, because uh, mm, right. Uh, yeah, so let me just leave it as, as, as this. And that, let me show how this asymptotics works. So for, so for, so for sine kernels, here I plot uh, by blue dots uh, uh, just values of the freedom determinant computed uh, numerically, and by red part is, is this uh, uh, analytics in this red box. And this is for uh, low temperatures, where we still have some oscillations, and for high temperatures, where, it's, uh, where the oscillations are overdamped, and you see uh, yeah, it starts to work almost perfectly. And it has to say that it's very different from typical way to, to introduce temperature in, uh, um, in, in CFT because what you would expect from a uh, conformal field theory prediction, if you had a uh, power law correlation function at zero temperature, then you would say that at finite temperature, all you have to do is to replace this x to sinh uh, x over t. But, th but this would... Uh, re uh, result in dependence of inverse uh, coupling constant as linear function of t, which we can compute, and actually it's not linear at all. So this is just, but again, this result uh, was obtained in the presumption that you have linear excitations up to all energies. And uh, yeah, obviously it's not true. All right, uh, so that's what we had uh, for this toy model. For our uh, normal model uh, of, 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 of impurity, uh, it, it's the same, so this is for uh, rho of x. Uh, so uh, you, you can see that asymptotics start to work uh, again almost immediately, I would say, even though it's supposed to work only for large x. So, so solids are effective, uh, uh, fermions and, and, and solid are this. And uh, for uh, momentum distribution, you cannot even spot the difference between this uh, effective and momentum. And this is uh, kind of all good, uh, but so far I did not touch anything about dynamics. In dynamics, as, as, as I said, we, we expect some high energy excitations, so maybe the uh, uh, picture will be a little bit challenging. And indeed, uh, we can consider, again, uh, the correlation function. So now it's basically the same sum, except we not, uh, previously we had just uh, summation over P and now we have uh, uh, also um, uh, time-dependent contribution, but all machinery works the same. You you get some free goal determinants that you can uh, evaluate numerically, which I sh will show in the next slide. And uh, as I said, we expect on top of uh, normal excitations, so 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 now it's zero temperature. We expect on, on, on top of normal excitations some uh, excitations of, of highly excited particles, which here is just Q. And this just, uh, these excitations can be evaluated uh, just by the saddle point method. So take an integral over Q, which will result in uh, um, some square root of T contribution to our uh, normal expectation from the um, Leitinger liquid pr prediction. And that's how it works for this row of X for zero temperature. So. Uh, now I'm plotting this, uh, sorry, uh, this, uh, this row has nothing to do with anything, it's it, it just this, this combination. Uh, right, so I just plotted at some value of lambda, some value of time, 45 and, and as function of x, real part, and the dots are, uh, well, exact uh, uh, values from the freedom determinants, and the red line, it's just what we would have if we take into account only Leitinger liquid contribution. And uh, blue is uh, when, you, when we take into account both uh, Leitinger liquid contribution and this nonlinear Leitinger liquid contribution. And then we see that we have like perfect coincidence. And now the only last question, so bear with me, <laughs> uh, is, is how all this uh, uh, um, transforms to finite temperatures. And that's where we have a lot of problems. Because we can try to play the same game. Uh, uh, and then, uh, in principle, we can tr try to identify this uh, effective new w when time is present. Then it will depend on both x and t, which is not a big deal. We, we can still try to, to, to substitute it in this effective form. However, it turns out 
that if we try to do it asymptotically, we cannot solve for uh, new that is uh, uh, continuous. It turns out that it has some mm, uh, jump discontinuities. And uh, even from this form, it's, it's kind of expected for new to have jump discontinuities as a critical point where x, uh, where, where q is uh, over uh, around x over t, because we don't want to get uh, uh, growing uh, with, with, with x and time uh, correlation function. But then this integral, if, if nu has jump discontinuous, it simply diverges. It doesn't make any sense. It diverges logarithmically. And uh, right now, we don't know what to do with it, to be honest. So the best uh, we say is that, OK, there might exist some smoothing functions which we are not able to uh, find out. But then we kind of give general predictions that on, on top of oscillations and uh, exponential decay, because of this log, uh, possible log divergence, we will have instead regularized uh, lower law uh, uh, corrections with, with, uh, with, with time. So this is, uh, and this is a little bit unexpected. Why you, you have uh, remains of zero temperature CFT in the correlations at, at, at finite temperature. So right now it's like the biggest mystery. And, and on top of that, uh, it has some practical uh, problems because we don't know this function, we don't know this constant as we, as we did before, and it does not look that look. But numerically, this coefficient seems to, to stay. So, right, and uh, like uh, one of the very last slide, uh, let me tell you as, 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 as a fun <laughs> story, uh, actually, the, the historically, this was the first question, the, what is the average momentum of the, of the impurity injected with some momentum P0? At that time, we did not know how to resum uh, everything in, in, in free goal, and we still don't know, for, don't know for P of T, but we can do this numerics for, for some number of particles. And then what we see uh, that if we inject impurity with some momentum P0, then very quickly it drops its value, but not to the zero. It's, it, 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 it's some finite value. And then it starts to uh, oscillate around some steady value P infinity. Sorry, it has to be P infinity here. And uh, if you think about this from physical point of view, it's quite remarkable because you inject a particle with some momentum P naught. And then you let it uh, interact with the gas of particles uh, as long as it wants. So you would expect that after, uh, uh, I know, million collisions, its, its distribution function would be identical to the distribution function of, the, uh, of your background gas, which obviously has average momentum zero. But that's not what happens. So, so, so this, uh, uh, there is this uh, steady value P of T, and then it was not clear. I mean, I mean from this picture, it, it, it's clear that probably it's not finite size effect, but when we did numerics, it was not like what, uh, and then uh, what we managed to do, we managed to express this, this P infinity through uh, uh, free-norm determinants, and that we can compute with numerically obtained values of this plateau, uh, dots and diamonds and, and triangles here, and solid lines are uh, expressions through, through free-norm determinants. And since free-norm determinants are answers already in infinite systems, then, okay, so this showed that all these uh, computations are, are okay. All right, so then this, there could be some other protocols of how you inject impurity. So, so, so instead of just injecting it, you can kick the, the whole gas with some momentum the delta pi. But again, you can get some uh, uh, answers in terms of remote determinants and with the same uh, dependence. All right, so this was my last slide. So with this, let me... Uh, conclude. So what uh, I, I told you about is uh, uh, how to compute momentum distribution in uh, in the Maguire model. Um, a little bit I told you, well, in the last slide about uh, uh, asymptotic momentum, about uh, correlations at uh, zero temperature and, and non-zero temperature. And uh, I point out uh, the main question now remaining uh, at finite temperature. So, so how to physically explain uh, this uh, which seems to be universal prefactor. Yeah, uh, yeah. Th then uh, there are 
uh, still remain uh, few remaining questions solely for for, for impurity. But <coughs> let let me try it. Now the most interesting is uh, is uh, this new universal conformal field theory uh, approach obtaining when we have both a dynamic system and a finite temperature. All right. So with this, let me conclude. Thank you. Okay. Thank Let's you. thank the speaker. <laughs> So now we have time for questions. The first question, Professor Białyński Birula. If you abandon this assumption that the impurity has the same mass, then the exact solution does not exist? That's right. Uh -huh. At least I don't know, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so that was the necessary condition to have. Yes. Uh, yes. Could you show the slide with the better answers? Yes. I just have one question about this. No, next, next, aha, here. Uh, this should have the property that when the one of the coordinates small x is equal to capital X, this determinant should vanish. Mm. And I don't see how this can happen. It must vanish because you multiply this function by the delta function. So Yes, 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 yes. you're right, you're right. Uh, let me see. Uh, ah, so yeah, so 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 in this language, it's, it it accounts for y goes to zero. Ah, so this is so then one one one. Ah, these are, okay, uh, these are the yes, 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 and okay. then there will be once. So yeah. This point, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the difference between x. Uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, because we're working in a system where impurity. Okay, okay, okay. But then uh, all the capital. A should be equal. No, no, no. It's enough because there will be once and once. And we have already two rows of once at zero. If we. No, no. no. Ah, no, right. No, it will not be unless all the capital A's are equal one, which you use later. Because when XI equals to the capital X, then one row is made of unit yeah, yeah, yeah. entries. One, 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 one. Yeah. And the determinant mm -hmm. vanishes mm -hmm. if there is another row where you have one, one, where one. With the one. same. Yeah. Yeah, b yeah, basically, I don't have the, the zero somehow. But the determinant must vanish. And I don't see why it should vanish. Yeah. It, okay, I'm pretty sure that this is a solution, but. Uh, yeah, maybe we can look for but two I particles. Think that on the next slide, or somewhere, you had the unit value for uh, the last. So, 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 ah, yeah, yes, yeah. so this is was for. Uh, oh, here, yes. Yeah, yeah, this is was for or already overlap. So this. Yeah, yeah. So this is. Uh, in the previous case. Uh, no, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it vanishes. Let me think. Hmm. But why should it vanish? You, ah, no, no, you're wrong. It should not vanish. It should vanish only when this coupling goes to infinity. Otherwise, why, why, why should it vanish? And indeed, when, when coupling goes to infinity, then indeed all these A's are equal. I, th I think your presumptions are... So it does not vanish? It does not vanish, yes. Automatically? It does not vanish. No, 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 no. It should vanish only for impenetrable bosons. So when only coefficients in front of delta function is infinity. When it's soft, why, why, why should it vanish? Because otherwise, when you act, when you act with the Hamiltonian on a good wave function, mm -hmm. this wave function is made of delta functions. No, no, no. It's 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 multiplied by its values at zero. So. No, the, I am talking about the action of the Hamiltonian yeah. on your wave function. And this should have the property that the action produces no, something which is correct. a good wave function. No, no, I don't think it's correct. And uh, even for one dimensional system, just yeah. one particle with delta function, the only condition is that uh, uh, the jump of the first derivative is... is look. Yeah. Look. Uh, no, I'm talking about a very simple mathematical yeah, yeah, yeah. question. Let's you consider one particle, one, uh, one uh, coordinate. 
let's forget about everything. Let's try to solve this Hamiltonian. Uh, right? Then the wave function must vanish at x equals zero. No, I don't think so. I think the condition is that the jump of the derivative of a uh, uh, wave function at x uh, minus zero and x plus zero uh, equals uh, uh, the value of the function at, yes. and that's the only condition. No, no. This does not have to be zero. It, is, it has to be zero when you go to impenetrable limit. When g goes to infinity. No, but I am talking about finite value of g. Finite value of g, psi should not vanish. So when you act with this Hamiltonian with delta yes. functions on a good wave function, mm -hmm. it is no longer a good wave function because the product of the delta function. Yeah, yeah but they don't have product of delta function. It I is have, a product. I have smooth function. No, no. You have a smooth function, yes. and the Hamiltonian has delta functions. Yeah, and it returns the value of this function at zero. So, right? The function, the function is not smooth, yes? It's not smooth, but it's not so smooth as in I mean, this is the point. I think that it's not differentiable. No, 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 but look. This is yeah, this is the jump of this. Uh, but I, I think that we should continue the discussion. On the other hand, we should also finish, because we are running out of time. So, the derivative will yes. Exactly. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I yes. propose the last question, and then we can continue just after the official end. Okay. I mean, if we just look at this as a physical problem, yes, we have a one-dimensional somehow constructed system of fermions, and we put another particle which has accidentally the same mass. That's the physical situation. Yes. And you do this all kind of complicated yes. calculation, and you have calculated the mean value of a momentum yes. for that impurity. Well, that means that impurity gets an effective mass. Mm -hmm. Why, in tent of so many very complicated mathematical expressions, you haven't plotted how that Effective mass. Uh, how, I mean, what is that effective mass? Here, here, here. Uh, that is this. This is effective I mean, mass. That I miss. In, in fact, it's, it's, it's one uh, over mass, not the mass. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's uh, adverse effective mass as a as a function of uh, coupling. Okay. For uh, gamma, you yes, yes, gamma, gamma is uh, basically g mm -hmm. normalized. <laughs> it's uh, g normalized by density. It turns out for, for one-dimensional systems, you have to. Here, here. Yes. By by Ross, by so I can think about as the strength of the interaction, for instance. Okay, I have. I think that we have to finish because we are running out of time. So let's thank the speaker again.